intermediate zone of cerebellum is also called spinocerebellum because of its connection with the spinal cord. It is also called spinocerebellum. It acts as a comparator. It acts as a comparator. It compares the intended plan of movement with the actually performed movement. It compares the intended plan of movement with the actually performed movement. It actually performed movement. And after comparing these two, the intended plan of movement and the actual performed movement, after comparing these two, if there is any discrepancy, if there is any discrepancy, it sends corrective signals to correct the movement. It sends corrective signals to correct the movement. So from here, from where, from where, cerebellum gets the intended plan of movement. It gets it from the cerebral cortex, motor cortex, and red nucleus. So from the motor cortex, and red nucleus, it gets the intended plan of movement of the motor cortex. And then signals about the actually performed movements, it gets from the muscles. So the spinocerebellar tract, it gets about the actually performed movements from the proprioceptors in the muscles. These two are compared, I mean the intended plan of movement and the actually performed movement. These are compared. Any discrepancy discrepancy is there. Impulses are sent to red nucleus, to thalamus, to motor cortex, to correct it. This is the comparator function of the cerebellum that it compares the intended plan of movement with the actually performed movements. From where it gets plan of the actually intended plan, it gets intended plan from the motor cortex and red nucleus. It gets it signals about the actually performed movements from the proprioceptors in muscles to the spinocerebellar tract. Compare them. If there is any discrepancy, then signals are sent via the red nucleus, thalamus, and motor cortex to correct the. Uh, movements as per plan, as per intended plan. Cerebellum, along with corticospinal tract, controls the fine scaled movements, fine scaled movements, especially of the distal parts of the limbs. So it, with the help of the corticospinal tract, it controls the fine scaled movements, especially of the distal parts of the limbs. Cerebellum also controls the range, rate, force, and direction of movement. It controls the rate, range, force, and direction of movement. It prevents overshoot. It prevents overshoot or pendular movement. It prevents overshoot or pendular movement. So this was about the function of the intermediate zone of the cerebellum. Now we come to the third lobe of cerebellum, that is uh, vermis and flocculonodular lobe. So vermis or flocculonodular lobe, these are also called vestibulo cerebellum. Also called vestibulo cerebellum. This part controls the posture and it controls the posture and equilibrium. Posture and equilibrium. It co also controls the ballistic movement. Very rapid movement. It also controls the ballistic movement. Ballistic movements or very rapid movement, such as movement of fingers during typing, movements of fingers during typing, typing, and movements of eye during reading. So movements of eye during reading. When the person reads, eyes move a 
along a line then jumps to next line then moves along the line then jumps to next line so these rapid eye movements during reading right these are controlled by the uh, vestibular cerebrum so rapid or resisting movements are controlled by the vestibular cerebrum it controls your attention it controls the posture and equilibrium it also has influence over the stretch reflex so normally cerebellum is facilitatory for the stretch reflex and muscle growth it normally is facilitatory for the stretch reflex and muscle growth cerebellum is vestibular cerebellum is also concerned with the uh, motion sickness it is also concerned with the motion sickness right so this was about the functions of the cerebellum so we start with the cerebellar disease next time